this video talks about the luteal phase. And before we go into that, I just want to do a quick recap of the follicular phase. Because you have to go through the follicular phase to get to the luteal phase. So, you have the follicular phase that's pre ovulation, ovulation, luteal phase. I'm sure you're sort of familiar with seeing diagrams, um, something like this. And so, in the follicular phase, the two sort of goals of it are to recruit a bunch of follicles, stimulate them, have one of them ovulate, and also prepare the, the uterus, specifically the endometrium and the myometrium in the uterus, um, to get ready for a, a possible implantation of a blastocyst in the pregnancy that would start in the luteal phase. And the important hormone of this follicular phase is estrogen. The estrogen is made by granulosa cells. And the important enzyme involved in that is called aromatase. And so with that background in mind, we move on to the luteal phase. Ovulation um, has occurred, and then there's two sequences of events that can happen here depending on if there's a pregnancy or if there's not a pregnancy. So we'll start with the, the no um, pregnancy scenario. So we have the anterior produ pituitary making its gonadotropins, LH, um, and FSH. And those act on the remnant of the follicle. So you have the follicle with the egg in, that, in there, and then it ovulated, and then the, there's a remnant left over. So the gonadotropins act on that remnant to turn it into corpus luteum. Corpus luteum is, is important because it makes the progesterone, um, and it also, makes, it also makes estrogen. And if we take a look um, here at our, at our diagram of the luteal phase, you can see that in the beginning of the first half of the luteal phase, you see progesterone production and also estrogen increasing. That's as the corpus luteum develops and grows under the influence of LH and FSH. But like most um, these endocrinology hormones, there's a negative feedback loop back up here with the pituitary hypothalamus. So you have this progesterone and estrogen inc increasing, and they negatively um, feed back to the LH and the FSH and cause those to decrease. And so at, at some point in the luteal phase, the LH and the FSH aren't stimulating the corpus luteum enough um, to keep it um, to keep it growing, to keep it alive, and it actually atrophies and goes away. And so you, that's reflected here by the decrease in the progesterone and the estrogen. And then at the end of the um, luteal phase, you have the progesterone and estrogen decrease to the point where um, there's menstruation that allows the LH and the FSH to increase because they're not being inhibited as much anymore because these levels are very low and start to recruit the next um, set of follicles and go on into the next, um, into the next cycle. So that's the no pregnancy uh, situation. So if there is a pregnancy, then the main difference is that you have this um, the blastocyst implant and you have beta HCG production. The beta HCG production actually starts a little bit before implantation. But you have the beta HCG production, and this uh, is very structurally similar to LH. And so instead of having the corpus luteum atrophy and go away and pro progesterone and estrogen production go down, you have the beta HCG maintain the corpus luteum, maintain uh, production of progesterone and, and estrogen, especially progesterone, which is very important because it allows the um, pregnancy to keep going. And, and um, the, that occurs for the first eight to eight to ten weeks under the influence of primarily the corpus luteum. Um, and then the placenta takes over um, those functions. So the placenta starts making beta HCG and the placenta starts making progesterone. And that occurs after after eight weeks and by, by the end of the certainly by the end of the first trimester, the placenta has taken over those those functions. And so the endocrinologic um, properties or functions of the placenta are, are kind of important to know about. And so the placenta makes beta HCG, which production peaks around week, week eight and sort of slowly decreases and isn't um, super important. It also makes the um, progesterone. So where the, the histology tie-in for this, you, you can see that in histology. Like we'll just go over it real quick here. You have the um, blastocyst implant in the uterus and has an outer layer called a trophoblast. And this trophoblast differentiates into two different types of cells. And so one of them is called, is called the syncytio trophoblast. So those are the, that's the outer layer. And there's also this cytotrophoblast, which is the inner layer. The syncytiotrophoblast, the outer layer, is the one that's active um, and is making endocrine function, has endocrine function, so it makes the progesterone and also the beta HCG, and then the, and that's the S, Y, N layer, and then the inner layer, the cyto layer, um, doesn't make hormones, um, but it's the stem cells, and it also is um, very important in implantation and invasion of the blastocyst into the uterine wall. So that is the
lecture about um, the, about the luteal phase, and that's the end.